what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Chef Shift OS version 2.7 the name is Solosis official build and this is of course based on Android 11 the build date here is 8th August 2021 and this particular build is based on OS's vendor but you actually need to flash Android 11 firmware as you can see it says in the changelog that Android 11 firmware is mandatory but yes I have tried with the Android 10 like 12.0.4 MIUI firmware but if you are on the older firmware you won't get the DRM certification as L1 or something so if you have broken DRM certification like me make sure you flash the latest A11 firmware so this is the firmware I'm talking about you have to flash this 12.5.1 firmware this is not the firmware vendor by the way this is actually about 100 MB so just the firmware it is talking about the DRM certification stuff let me tell you that if you have broken your DRM certification earlier permanently and now if you are on Android 10 new Y firmware then here in this ROM you will get L3 but if you flash the latest A11 firmware which is this 12.5.1 firmware then you flash the ROM then flash fcrypt disabler and then flash magisk and stuff if you need those after that you will get L1 certification over here so yes I have flashed this ROM with the Android 11 latest firmware and as you can see it says clean flash is mandatory and MIUI official build will be up in a few days so if you are worried about flashing this OSS vendor based ROM just make sure to flash the MIUI vendor based ROM later whenever it comes out and again this build of course includes the G apps now let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like the stock launcher over here is the shape shift launcher as you are noticing and this particular launcher has a couple of features let me show you in the misc we have the double tap gesture the developer options and home screen rotation and stuff in the app drawer we have the hide app option then the show icon labels in drawer you can disable that and in the home screen we have the show icon labels on desktop then the icon labels in landscape and stuff and the gradient on top these kind of things let me go back and here in the icons we have these icon size and stuff so to the left of the home screen you do get the google's discover page still and if you swipe down anywhere in the home screen you do get the quick setting panel and if you swipe up you get the app drawer and of course the blurs and stuff everything is working fine if you're noticing in the background with the quick setting panel it has this background blur and this is how the volume panel looks like by the way as you can see this is the stock volume panel yes you can definitely change this volume panel if you want to from the customization settings the widgets in the home screen are working fine the whole ui is very very smooth but this rom i was pretty hyped about it but let me tell you i'm quite disappointed here are the reasons on this particular rom you cannot get the anx camera properly working which is the latest version 190r because in the version 190r there is mentioned in the like official anx development that there might be some OSS vendor based ROMs that won't support this ANX camera and this is that OSS vendor based ROM which does not support ANX camera properly. Let me show you. I have flashed this ANX camera version 190R. If you don't know how to flash it, check out the description or the cards. Yes, I have used this ANX camera pro app over here to enable a couple of features but they are not simply getting enabled. Let me actually show you if I go into the video settings, I can't even get the 4K 60fps which you get out of the box on most of the ROMs. And in the pro mode, I can't enable the pro video mode over here. And if I go into the portrait mode, the camera simply says it can't connect to camera. So yeah, portrait mode is completely broken. There is no 4K 60fps option and stuff. So these bugs with the ANX camera actually makes this ROM a bummer in my opinion. Because in most other ROMs, you can use these cameras. Like the ANX camera is perfectly working in the Air OS or the Evolution X or ROMs like these even on other OSS vendor based ROMs these cameras are working super fine but here it's just not working even the lenses let me actually show you if I tap this ultra wide angle lens if I switch to that the camera will just force close watch this and it's gone so yeah this is the bugs that I have been facing yes 2x camera is working fine but the ultra wide simply does not work and it force closes the Enix camera version 190R and if you are wondering if I have flashed the correct modules and stuff as you can see I have systemless host enabled then I have MIUI core installed the Enix camera 190R I have flashed with Magisk and I have also flashed the MIUI gallery and stuff but still I am getting those bugs and you get this stock camera by default which is the old kind of Google camera and it has very basic kind of functionality I would say and the UI does not look good so that is why I have installed the ANX camera over here in the battery settings you won't get those charging cycles or the battery capacity and stuff the current battery capacity design battery capacity charging cycle etc are simply missing from the battery settings and also there is no option to actually get the thermal profiles over here so in the battery settings as you can see there is no thermal profile option so I can't really set per app to a specific thermal profile which is weird 
Yes, this ROM has so many customizations, but it doesn't have the simple things like thermal profiles over here. Some of you guys may really need the DC dimming, but here that is simply missing. So no DC dimming option is there over here. Yes, night light works fine. But again, without DC dimming at night, I would say it definitely makes a little bit of strain at the night. So that's what I feel. Let me actually turn it off the night light. I mean, so yeah, again, no DC dimming option that you will get over here. And if you're wondering from where to get into the customization of this ROM, well for that you go into the shape shifter and there you will get all the customizations. Yes, I'm not gonna show you all of those things every time. If you wanna know the customizations of this ROM, just click on the card right there. But let me show you one thing that in a fingerprint display, you do not have the always unlock with fingerprint scanner over here. That is fine. That is like not present in most ROMs. Some of the ROMs like AeroOS comes with that feature. So I really love them. But I'm not feeling really bummed out or something without that feature on this particular ROM that is totally fine. But here, let me actually show you in the fingerprint icon if you tap, it actually shows you that it will go to your gallery or something. Then you can set a custom fingerprint icon. That is good. But there is no option for the fingerprint icon presets. So that is how it is. As you can see, you can change the animations. Of course, there are plethora of fingerprint scanner unlocking animation. Also the animated FOD icons are there. As you can see, we have these many options. But again, no static fingerprint scanner icons you can choose over here, which is kind of a bummer in my opinion. Yes, screen of fingerprint scanner option is there and visible night light and stuff is there. You can change the fingerprint breast color over here. So let me actually double tap in the home screen and let me show you. This is how the always on display looks like. By the way, as you can see, it has this Android 12 kind of clock. I don't know why it shows null over there. Really sorry for the background noise, guys. And here, let me show you from the like always on display. If I tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks super fine, no issues whatsoever. Let me try one more time from the always on display. The fingerprint scanner is very fast and snappy and it does this kind of animation as you can see on the lock screen. Okay, so now it's not doing that. Let me actually lock the device once. And if you're noticing, it does that animation whenever it appears because I have that fingerprint scanner animation like animated FOD icon enabled. In the MISC settings, I love that it has the USB configuration and stuff. Pocket detection is there. Also, we have all the theming options like in the themes, you will get the accent color options and these are the accent color presets as you can see. And there is the apply button, whatever accent color you want to choose. These are the presets, but you can actually get to choose the RGB accent color with this accent color picker. As you can see, plethora of accent colors you can choose from here. There is a reset RGB accent color and the theme overlays and stuff is there. You can adjust the system UI rounded corners and stuff. And as you can see, there is a settings dashboard icon style. You can change it to OSP, Oxygen OS 11 or 10 as you would like it. So yeah, a lot of options are there for the customization. I'm not gonna go into that more. And here, let me actually show you the about section. Sometimes the system just force closes, I don't know why. And it shows the shape shift logo. It shows SH4 and a sentence, which I cannot read over here. And here we have the Android version and shape shift logo is present up there. Android version shows as 11. The shape shift version is 2.7 release. And we have the Solosis name over there. The security patch is latest of August 5th, 2021. The stock kernel is Perf Plus kernel and the Linux status is enforcing. The build date here is mentioned that is 8th August 2021. Moving on to the system panel, it does not have any kind of system updater or something yet in this OSS window based ROM at least. And here in the gesture settings, we have a lot of gestures like double tap to sleep on the status bar or lock screen, both are working fine. Brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar is actually working flawlessly. No issues with that as you are noticing. Also, we have the swipe to take screenshot and this swipe to take screenshot, let me actually show you. It has the long screenshot, edit, share and delete option. So yeah, those are really great that we are getting all of those options. And of course, we have the quickly open camera, the system navigation gestures are there. If you go into the settings, we have the gesture bar length and the radius customization as well. But those are on the top. Usually they stay on the bottom, but those are on the top. Here also you can customize this back gesture, left edge, right edge over here. So let me actually show you. It actually customizes with the area. If you are noticing, I have not seen this in other ROMs, but this is great that you can actually swipe like from right here, I guess. So yeah, as you can see, so you can customize this area of the back gesture, which is cool. And there is also the dead zone over here. You can customize that, I guess. Let me go back and we have the three button navigation as well. No two button navigation over here. Prevent ringing, then the activate the torch. You can set the activate torch to double tap on the power button or the long press with the power button, toggle torch, so yeah. And right now, let me move into the front camera settings. I have expected to see the calibration option, but the calibration option of the camera is simply not there. 
which may be a bummer if your camera is stuck or something in the OSS window based ROMs in most ROMs it is present but here it's not simply like the option is simply not there and camera LED you can disable or enable the default keyboard here is Gboard in the battery settings again we have the full battery usage seeing option by this view detail the usage and in terms of the battery life I would say it can definitely give you six hours of screen on time 83 percent juice left and I have used this device for almost one and a half hours so yeah it can give you about six plus hours of screen on time but let me tell you the battery temperature over here while you are fast charging goes really crazy I have seen the battery temperature going up in my AC room like for 45 degrees Celsius which is huge with a 33 watt charger but yes 45 degrees with a 33 watt charger is not usually what I see mostly on the K20 Pro but here let me tell you the battery temperature just increases up to too hot scenario I would say so 45 degrees it's just too much while it's fast charging in my opinion so yeah fast charging is really painful on this particular ROM at night I had to plug out the charger to actually keep the device cool so yeah I could not even finish the full charge over here which I usually do with most other ROMs the good thing is there is the battery temperature showing up option over here and in the display settings we have the brightness level and the dark theme then the night light live display is there and from there you can enable this outdoor or bright sun mode if you want to the color calibration option is there you can change the rgb of the screen then we have the picture adjustment like hue saturation intensity and contrast you can change from here let me go back we have the styles and wallpapers there we have all these like the on device wallpapers as you can see this is the on device wallpaper it shows looks like the dark faced wallpaper i would say i guess and in the grid option you have up to six by six grid and if you go into the clocks you have plethora of clock options and you also get this shape shift 12 clock but this is not actually the big kind of android 12 clock this is the newer kind of looking clock i would say so as you can see this is the clock that you get in the lock screen and it kind of like weight to the font so yeah it looks cool i would say but yes it's no like big kind of android 12 font and we have the shape shift normal clock and then we have the id s funny and the other options like fluid then the tux and samsung colored and other stuff but yes the android 12 big kind of clock is missing from this rom screen timeout is there rotation you can change up to 180 degrees and the asp cutout emulation is there so a lot of like cutouts are there if you are using that for some reason i am not really sure why and we have the lock screen option here we get the always show time and info then the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option is there and you can enable those if you want to in the sound settings we have the media call etc volume the settings force closes every time for me i'm not really sure why let me actually scroll down we have the phone ringtone changing option we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect option and here we have the screenshot sound again there is no me audio dirac over here which is again disappointing in my opinion in terms of sound again you do not get any audio effects kind of app or you do not get any moto audio or dolby audio kind of app over here but the audio quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is good enough right out of the box now let's talk about the interesting thing like the drm info as you can see it shows l1 over here with the latest android 11 firmware so that is really great for me at least because I have broken my DRM certification permanently earlier on the Redmi K20 Pro but right now with the latest Android 11 firmware it's back. The safety net should pass right out of the box but I have flashed Magisk over here and with that also safety net passes and I can use banking apps on this ROM without any issues. And here you also get this shift papers app and with that you get a lot of wallpapers and they look really really colorful and cool it has this dark like colorful feeling. So yeah, all the wallpapers over here do look awesome in my opinion. In terms of the stock dialer, yes, it is still a Google dialer, but you do get the call recording options with the latest Google dialer. So yeah, just update your Google dialer if you don't have this call recording option over here and Vaulty calling over here is working super fine. And there is also the Vaulty and 4G icon you can see on the status bar. And if you're worried about the performance benchmarks here, the N2 and Geekbench score of this particular ROM and with a CPU stress test. The recent panel I like over here that it has this transparent kind of looking buttons. It has the screenshot and the clear all option over here. And if you tap here, you get to see the split screen, the close app and the pin app option. Then you can go to the apps info from here. You can close this particular app too. And you can just tap here to clear all the apps from memory. This widget I'm using is from the Android 12 clock. So I'll list that below in the description. Don't worry. In terms of the quick setting panel, you can edit and add multiple toggles over here, but I have already added a couple of toggles. So let me just show you. We have the battery kind of saver toggle and we have the dark theme. Then the Android 11 screen recorder is there. We can record the device audio and the microphone audio with that at the same time, of course. And we have the hotspot, do not disturb the data saver. Heads up, you can disable night light. You can enable if you want to. Then we have the 
nearby shared silent and the always on display you can have it on charge or all the time then you can switch to the live display and you can go to the bright like very bright display mode over here with that particular toggle and again there is no reboot toggle no fps info toggle no dimming toggle over here so you have to keep those things in mind but there is the sound toggle so if you tap and hold on it you get the volume panel just like this and you can change this volume panel if you want to of course and i have enabled the hey google option over here so let me actually see if it works with the keyword hey google as you can see google assistant is working super fine okay google so voice trigger is not a problem what's the weather it's 32 with haze today there'll be isolated thunderstorm okay so yeah it is working fine so what do I think about the latest shape shift OS on the Redmi K20 Pro? I would say yes, this ROM has a quite a lot of hype. That is the reason why I flashed it and it has huge amount of customization. The ROM usually stays very smooth, no issues. And if you flash this ROM with the latest firmware, you get the like DRM certification and stuff L1 back if you have permanently broken it too. So those things really makes this ROM awesome. But then again, you have all those bugs like ANX camera not working properly. Then you don't have DC dimming and you don't get to see the charging cycle and stuff and the device gets too hot while fast charging those things are still there so if you want to flash this rom make sure you keep those things in mind so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Chito from KTN Tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now